of color, low-income people, and those who already face barriers to care. This is a direct attack on the most vulnerable. If this goes into effect, we're going to prevent millions of people from getting the care that they need. And I can tell you firsthand, the patients I see want comprehensive quality care. I recently saw Amanda for the termination of an unplanned pregnancy, and she was able to come back and get birth control to prevent a future unintended pregnancy. Or there was Maria who came to us because she had other medical issues and needed affordable birth control to prevent a risky pregnancy. Or the countless young people who are in college and want to plan their futures. Planned Parenthood is a trusted name that people of all backgrounds recognize. When you're young and searching for reliable information, we are absolutely one of the first places people come. All of this is threatened if we aren't able to see patients and give them comprehensive health care. As a doctor and as a woman in the fight for reproductive health and rights, this is a cruel policy designed to keep people from having access to the best health care available. I will not be gagged and I will not stand for it. Here in King County, we are lucky because not only do we get to live in a beautiful place like this with the sun shining down on days like this, even when it rains, it's still, it's still beautiful here. But we also have some tremendous leadership and we have leaders like King County Executive Dow Constantine who stand with us every single day and stand to fight to protect access to health care, stand with Planned Parenthood, and I know is going to stand up against this gag rule. So let me introduce Executive Constantine. Thank you so much. So here we are gathered again to speak out against yet another outrage from this illegitimate president. Let's just think this through. In order to receive reproductive health care funds, you must refrain from providing or giving accurate advice about reproductive health care. <laughs> it's Orwellian. He's learned something from his patron Putin, hasn't he? I mean, that is really, really bizarre logic. But this administration has continued to do everything they can to cut women off from access to critical health care. This gag rule, Trump's gag rule, is unconscionable. It bans women from even discussing with health care providers a full range of medical options. It places the government in the examination room with you. Here is your trip to the doctor. You, your physician, and Donald Trump in the room together. And, as the doctor said, it discriminates against women of limited means. Title 10 serves 4 million people each year, many of whom would be unable to access reproductive health care without it. This rule even contradicts the basic purpose of Title 10. Title 10 was intended to ensure that every person, regardless of wealth, regardless of insurance, regardless of social status, has access to basic reproductive health care. This is what we do at King County. Yeah. King County Public Health, in partnership with our sisters and brothers at Planned Parenthood and other providers throughout the community, provide an excellent level of reproductive health care, ensuring that every person has access. King County runs eight clinics funded through Title 10. And all of those clinics and all of those services could be at risk. But it would also impact every health care provider in the program, from community health centers to hospitals to school-based health centers, and that impacts every woman, but it also impacts every patient who comes in for reproductive health care when those clinics are defunded. I gotta say, we've had remarkable success in this county working with our partners at Planned Parenthood and others. Over the last 10 years, we were able to drive down the teen pregnancy rate by over 
50%. How? <laughs> Through accurate reproductive health care information and complete medically appropriate care for every patient. So, attacking the basic health care of millions is just wrong, and not just wrong, it is dangerous. King County is going to continue to stand united against this administration's continued attacks on women's health care. We are now litigating over the administration's rule that says that we cannot provide accurate sex, informa sex education information in our schools. And we are going, yes, and we are going to ensure one way or another that every woman in this county, that every person in this county is going to continue to have access to full reproductive health care no matter what. We are going to outlast this administration. We are going to outlast the Supreme Court. We are going to be the way forward for this country. Thank you for being here to march and speak out against this outrage. Thank you. We have heard so many times today how long we've been at this fight, and it is so true. I gotta tell you, this sign right here. So we found this sign in the office today. Going through our archived signs. Now, my colleague Courtney has worked in that building for well, for over 10 years. And in the last 10 years, we've never used this sign. This sign predates that. It's at least 12 years old, maybe 15, maybe older than that. And I know there are so many of us here today where this isn't our first rally, this isn't the first time we've been speaking out, and this isn't the last time we're going to speak out either. And it's at this moment, with this proposed rule, that we know that we are going to have to get louder we're going to have to get stronger, and we're going to have to speak out more often, and we're going to have to tell our stories. And at this point, I'd like to invite up one of my colleagues and fellow rabble rousers, the executive director of NARAL Pro Choice Washington. Give it up for Tiffany. Thank you, Treasurer. This is an attack not just on my healthcare provider and a healthcare provider I support. This is an attack on my friends. You don't want to mess with me when you attack my friends. So silence, shame, and stigma is the recipe that the Trump and Pence administration has been cooking up for reproductive health care in the United States. This new domestic gag rule is a dangerous policy that threatens health care access for millions of Washingtonians, particularly the vulnerable. The Washington residents who rely on public funded health care clinics for basic health care, including family planning, routine cancer screenings, information about a full range of pregnancy related care, and that includes abortion. But lest we forget, these discriminatory policies are nothing new. The Hyde Amendment already creates barriers for low-income women seeking abortion care here in the United States. For decades, we've had a two-tier system of access to abortion. In 1991, however, the people here in Washington State said no to that two-tier system, and they voted to use our own state public funding to ensure that all people have access to the right to decide when and whether to start and expand a family. Which, by the way, that was no accident that that law passed in 1991. It was because of hard work and activism from people like you. They were gathering petition signatures. They were mobilizing their friends and family to vote their values. They were putting in the hard work and they won. And we can do it again. As 
you all know, one of the first acts of this administration was to impose a gag rule on countries receiving U.S. aid. This same gag rule has resulted in death and despair across the world. This is nothing new. They always start with attacking poor and working class folks right here at home and internationally. The anti-choice movement, they're celebrating right now. They're celebrating that Trump and Pence are accomplishing all of this for them. Can you imagine a world where Title X funds are being distributed to fake women's health centers who lie to women, who shame and stigmatize women, LGBTQ folks, and gender non-conforming folks? No, they're thrilled though. They're thrilled that these funds meant to support access to a full range of reproductive health care could be diverted into their abstinence-only, unscientific, abortion-stigmatizing programs. But we will not let that happen here in Washington State. We have trusted health pl family planning providers who offer a full range of compassionate care, whether it's through the public health at the county, our friends at Planned Parenthood, Cedar River Clinic, and other Title X providers in our community. We already have those trusted places we can go for our health care. This threat to access is a threat to the health of our communities. NARAL Pro-Choice Washington's members stand in solidarity with our health care providers, and we stand in solidarity with the elected officials who are taking this fight as far as we can go. This is an attack on our basic human rights, and we will not stand for it. I don't need to tell you this, but we are headed in the wrong direction as a nation. But in less than six months, we have an opportunity to start turning this around. The midterm elections are critical. I invite you to join us, NARA, Planned Parenthood, and those of us who are building a pro-choice majority at every level of government. Stay plugged in. Commit to electing pro-choice candidates at every level of government. Keep doing the work, and we can win this. We will fight and we will win.